Okay, another cool demo of our AI pack, Pro Coder for production coding. So the last time what we did is we did this game with nice particle animations. And the way we did it is we did it the production way, which is rather to do vibe coding, which is coding blind and letting the AI to structure all the code. What we did is we guided and we asked the AI to refactor our code. Now, as a second step, what we would like to do is to document all of these files into a doc summary MD. So first, what we're going to do is doing a cargo install AI pack. So for now, AI pack is compiled from source with Rust. So you have to install Rust. And I'm going to work on the binaries soon and for Windows support as well. So what we do that is going to compile everything. You're going to have a version above this one. And then what the command line is AIP. And you are going to install the Pro. So that is a namespace coder. So that is the new JC coder, which has been upgraded to Pro coder with some very cool stuff. So now we're going to do that. And we're going to see that is installing the Pro coder in my home directory at pack install Pro coder. So I can see the code. Now, the real cool thing about this is that it's just nine kilobytes. So it's very small. So in a way, the AI pack is a runtime and an agent pack could be very small. You have to make sure that you have your keys. The way that we check if we have our keys, we can do a AIP check keys. And so that will show us the keys that we have in the environment variable. So obviously it doesn't display the key if I have them. So I will do that offline. And now if I do it again, where AIP check keys, I'm showing that I have all my keys. So obviously for me, because I work with all of them, I make sure that I have all the keys. So now that we have that, we can do a AIP run pro at coder. That is a new coder and we're going to run it. And what it gives us here is a coder prompt. And by convention, we put it into the AI pack dot prompt and the pro at coder. So that is just a convention. You can, the agent could have put it anywhere. Now, the cool thing about that is again, we have this parametric agent which the prompt now can have parameters. And they are put in 2ML code block with a meta like that. And then here's where we're going to control all our agents. Can even have model aliases. And then we have a write mode now in the procoder. And then here, for example, we are mapping it to the cheap one, which is for mini. Actually, we're going to use the fast for that demo. So the way it works is that we have this prompt file where we have the parametric on top and then we have the answer at the bottom. Here I just put the documentation at the, at the beginning and then we can ask any question. So for example, we can say, can you do a loop in Rust? And then you press R here. I have a command R to send the R to the terminal and that will show me in line the Rust here kind of a loop. So far so good. The reason why it didn't create any files is because now we have the right false. If I did write true, then the coder agent will take this path and will create the file. So we're going to use this technique here now to create our documentation. And in fact, we're going to show some of the very cool power. So first of all, we're not going to have the context globes. Context globe is everything we put in the context inside the same prompt in a way. What we're going to do is we're going to use the working globes. And what we're going to say, first we're going to say we want to go to the base deer root because we're going to put the doc folder at the base here. And then what we're going to say is to say, well, I want the working globes to be everything under web content. So we're going to do that. And this is going to be a star like that. The key difference between the context globes and the working globes is working globes can be parallelized. And this is super powerful. So for example, here we're going to do working concurrency equal true and input concurrency equals six. So that will go six at a time. So if you have hundred files or a thousand files, that would be six. I could have six in at a time as well. So as long as you have your rate limit, this can go crazy. So now the cool thing is we are going to use uh, the fast mode here and we are going to create files. And we are going to create a file, spare files such as they don't work on each other. We could use append as well, but this one works well. So that is the right mode. We are going to use the Gemini 2 flash. It's very fast and it's virtually free, basically. And now the trick here is what we're going to say in the prompt. 
And the prompt is going to be, can you summarize the working files? So we're telling the AI the working files, it will be only one per request actually, and save each file summary in doc.summary. So by best practices, my dot is ignored in my git ignore. So this way, this is just temporary files. And then I give a name like that, and then I explain to the AI what the file path and name will be. So basically we normalize the path where we replace the slash by dash. Now I'm going to press R on this guy, and then boom, we see six at a time. And I didn't even edit the video here. This is a rare speed. We already have all our summary. And then that's it. So we have all this summary of all of the different files. So that is pretty cool. Now, what we want is to consolidate those into one file. For that, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our prompter and on the top, now we're going to use the context globs. So we're going to uncomment the context globs and we're going to say that we want to take all of those files. So we're going to say doc dash summary tense and we'll take all of the files over there and then those, we don't need those. Now we're going to comment this one because we don't need to work on working globes. And usually the working globes are pretty advanced. Actually, it's usually you will work with mostly context globes until you want to parallelize things. So now we have that. And so we're going to go back down. We're going to keep our model fast for that. Flash is good. The other one, when you start coding, the great one is the G Pro which is bounded to Gemini 2.5 Pro, it's awesome. Otherwise we have the Pro, which is Cloud, it's also very good. So in this prompt, what we're going to do now is going to be a prompt like that, which is say, can you summarize the context files and normalize them and save the overall summary in doc slash summary.md. Now we press save, run, and then boom, I put some information over there, duration, four seconds, the price is nothing, it's virtually free flash. Here's some token. Here is the model that has been used, the adapters, the numbers of context files. So that is nice to be able to check what's going on. And here is the answer minus the file content. The file content has been extracted and has been put there. And now everything is working very nicely. Everything has been normalized and we have the doc. And that is pure power. Until next one, happy coding.